we got that. All right, so good morning, everybody. My name is Doug Nelson, and presenting uh, with me this morning is Jim Matthews and Doug Ireland. So I'm actually from the Rotary Club of Champaign. Uh, Jim, would you like to introduce yourself as well, and then we'll do Doug? Sure, sorry, my, my uh, screen started sliding around. Uh, I'm Jim Matthews. I'm a past president of uh, Muhammad Rotary, and I am uh, currently serving as uh, <clears throat> assistant governor for Area 2. Wonderful. I am Doug Ireland. I am the current president of Danville Sunrise Rotary and AG elect for um, this upcoming year. Awesome. So just as a warning, you have a double Doug uh, session this morning. So, you know, look out. So anyway, uh, Jim, would you start, because uh, you had a really nice framework for us to begin this discussion. And again, because the group is so small, feel free to don't wait, to, you know, don't, you don't have to put a message in the chat. Just let's just have a discussion about uh, various ways to approach technology. Okay, Jim? Uh, sure, I'll be happy to go first. Um... Uh, first, let me give you a little a little background. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is why uh, Muhammad Rotary has gone to a hybrid uh, meeting form, and um, we will probably continue this form even after uh, we're given clearance to hold uh, in-person meetings. Um, when the pandemic became, began, um, Muhammad had been meeting in a, uh, a nursing home, a re retirement uh, home in Muhammad called Bridalbrook, and we'd been there for about seven years. But because of the threat to their uh, particular population, we had to leave. And uh, so uh, in the early stages of the pandemic, for two months, we didn't meet at all. And then one of our members, Mark Kessler, who was a faculty member at Parkland, Community College offered uh, to host a Zoom meeting <clears throat> each week for our club using this faculty Zoom account. <clears throat> and after a month or so of that, I bought a site license for the club and, uh, and then I became the, the host. <clears throat> In September, Kessler offered to let us use an office space he owned and uh, rented out to remote workers called co-working. It's a fairly small space, uh, but we had a small in-person attendance, so it worked fine. And in this space, we used a projector, a portable projector stand, a portable screen, <clears throat> and desktop speakers to create a hybrid uh, meeting environment. Uh, the club already owned all of this equipment except the desktop speakers, and I donated those uh, to the project. Uh, throughout the winter holidays, we typically averaged three members attending on Zoom for every member who came in person. <clears throat> and many of our weekly speakers chose to present via Zoom, and that worked out really well. Those attending in person wore masks and maintained appropriate social distance. Our club attendance remained uh, strong. As the vaccination, vaccinations began to roll out, the, club, the ratio of attendees flipped to three to one uh, in favor of attending in person. We've had to move to a bigger space for our meetings in, in downtown Muhammad. Our meetings begin at seven in the morning and at least two of our members work for nonprofits and they need to be in their office by seven and they're able to join our meetings uh, because we're doing this in a hybrid format. Uh, we continue to offer all speakers uh, the opportunity to present via Zoom if they prefer to do that. Uh, during this time, we've used my laptop as our platform. <clears throat> it's an aging Macintosh Pro built in 2015 that Illinois Wesleyan gave me when I retired. During our time at co-working, I could go in at seven every Tuesday evening and set up the equipment. But now that we've moved to a different venue to which I don't have off hours access, Kessler sets up for us. He's the uh, Sergeant at Arms for our club. The new venue has no sound dampening on the walls and that makes uh, Zoom audio problematic during our social time before the meeting. Uh, we've not found yet found any need for an external uh, microphone, though I'm using one now and do use one for our uh, family 
uh, gatherings every week. Um, let me just try and share this real quickly. Um, so there are advantages to, uh, uh, I think there are advantages to doing meetings in a hybrid format. There's more members can participate. Uh, we really don't need to do a lot of Zoom training for our speakers. They all seem uh, pretty, pretty conversant with Zoom and uh, <clears throat> we've not had any problems with speakers not being able to present. Uh, we project on a screen so that everybody can be seen uh, and uh, <clears throat> the desktop speakers are essential so that everyone can hear. I should mention that Muhammad's a small club and um, we get oh, 50, between 15 and 20 people attend every, every week. Uh, there's some disadvantages. Um, everybody has to have the right Zoom address ahead of time to be able to, to, to uh, log in. So communication is crucial before the meeting, making sure we, we send out at least two emails to every member before every meeting so they, they, we can be sure that they get the, uh, the address if they're gonna come in uh, through Zoom. And uh, occasionally the Zoom address will change. And uh, so we have to let everybody know, including the district, so that if somebody wanted to visit us that week uh, via Zoom, uh, they could do so. Um, and then, uh, so this is, these recommendations I'm offering here are based on our own uh, lived experience. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, it's, we found it very important to invest in a really uh, good quality projector that can be seen in well-lit rooms. So we, we have a projector that uh, it costs between uh, $350, $400, but we can, we can use it in a room uh, we can't draw shades in the rooms that we've been in. And uh, so it's been really important to have a very bright uh, uh, projector. Uh, speakers are crucial so that uh, everybody can in the room can hear who's speaking uh, virtually. Uh, uh, the whoever is the host needs to be comfortable with technology. Uh, we found it's important to keep things simple, not, not go into for a lot of fancy technology, but just use what we need uh, to get everybody uh, included. Uh, we, we always assume something's going to go wrong, <laughs> and it will. And uh, <clears throat> if we have a comfortable host, uh, we can fix it. Uh, this just happened to me last week. I hadn't, I didn't remember to charge my laptop battery and uh, we got through the meeting fine, but we were in a board meeting afterwards and my battery quit. And that meant all the people coming in via Zoom were out. That was not a good moment. Um, you have to store all this equipment. And uh, so who has access to that storage and who's gonna do your setup? Uh, all are things you have to work out ahead of time. We've taken this uh, format on the road. Uh, we've taken it to the park district here in Muhammad. We're going uh, to an apartment complex in May. Uh, and uh, so you need to make sure you know the site's Wi-Fi, and um, again, work out who's gonna bring the equipment, who's gonna set it up. Be careful of extension cords. People can, who are there in person can trip over them very easily. So make sure that you've got them secure. And uh, we always remind speakers who are speaking to us in person not to talk to the screen, <laughs> but to talk to the device that's uh, broadcasting, whether it's a laptop or whether it's a remote camera you might be using. Uh, Doug, that's what I have so far. That's great. So um, for, um, for Doug Ireland, tell, me, tell us about your club's experience as well. Well, our club is uh, similar to Jim's in terms of uh, the amount of people we have. A Danville Sunrise is 27 members, and um, a lot of the things I'm going to say are kind of copy what what Jim said. Um, back in March of 2020, at the end of 2020 uh, of March, we decided uh, to cut meetings off. Um, we had just moved our location to our local YMCA. And um, we weren't sure what to do. So uh, we did some research and we took about four weeks off. And so the end of uh, April, so basically a year ago this past week, um, 
uh, I decided to set up the Zoom, sign up for it. And uh, we got members back to being engaged as much as possible. I think the whole newness of the idea of Zoom was great. Um, and then once some restrictions kind of lightened up a little bit, we moved it to a hybrid meeting, then went back to Zoom only. And now we're back to hybrid. Um, and I think that has not necessarily caused any difficulty with the, the members who attend uh, out of our 27 members. Uh, prior to all this, we had probably 21 to 22 members, maybe 20 to 22 members per week. Uh, what we've noticed uh, at the start of 2021 is we only have maybe 13 to 17 members now uh, with a hybrid format. And so, um, yes, we are meeting back at the YMCA and we have a large enough room that we can spread out. Um, and I'll show you here uh, some pictures here in just a second. But um, I think where we may have lost some people, but then more towards the engagement uh, more than anything is that we had the issue of starting the hybrid or Zoom only, moving to hybrid and then going back and forth. And I think um, what we found is more people wanted to be there in person, but they're still worried about being in person. Um, now, I think we're at the point where people have gotten enough vaccinations, enough, enough people have gotten them that they feel more comfortable. Uh, we've always been a mask optional in our um, in our in-person meetings um, because you know I like to say we're all adults here. We should know better. If you need to wear a mask because it's more comfortable for you, go ahead. We have no problem with that. Uh, so I will share my screen here and kind of do what Jim did on some of the pros and cons. And um, so when we look at this. Um, a lot of similarities, uh, but I think one of the pros is you can attend from any location. Uh, if you just do a Zoom only, obviously you can, um, like we have a, a, a snowbird, mm. a guy, you know, mm. that is in Florida. So he's, uh, mm. um, he attends that way uh, six months out of the year. Um, what I found uh, great is we can attract the speakers from outside the community. Typically, you know, you have them all in person. They're only from your community because they can't get to our 7 a.m. meetings, just like Jim uh, probably has that same issue. Um, but just for instance, um, with the Zoom option, uh, we had a gentleman that was from Danville who'd moved to Virginia. Um, well, he had contracted polio when he was a young kid and has lived with it his entire life and is uh, still having difficulties with it uh, to this day. And he's, I think, getting close to 70 years old. Um, he joined us via Zoom from Virginia. Um, Bill Tobin, I don't know if that name rings a bell to anybody with Shelterbox. Uh, he is more than willing to get up because he's in California. He's more than willing to get up at 5 a.m. and present to our group via Zoom as well. So you have some outside possibilities. You don't have to, it's outside the box thinking. That's the beautiful thing about this. Um, the growth possibilities, like the gentleman who lives in Florida half the year, he could you know, recruit some members down there if they wanted to join via Zoom and be a part of something um, that maybe uh, like for uh, Roger is our current member that lives down there. His nearest club is 40 minutes away and it's through all this traffic. And of course he doesn't like traffic. He lives in the country when he's here. So um, he just attends our meetings instead of going to that local club. Um, what we've also done with Zoom is we started electronic payments. Everybody used to bring uh, checks and cash to meetings, give it to the treasurer, to the president, and you move on. I have found with this, we set up a PayPal account. We're actually getting more dollars in our log banks because we're doing PayPal than we did when we were in person. People don't give one or two dollars on PayPal, they give 20, 25 dollars and they do it on a monthly basis versus say a buck a week. So we are seeing uh, some increase in revenue to help um, give back to the community. I do see some cons in, in doing all this. Um, we've, like I told you, our attendance has fallen. Uh, I think our engagement has decreased, honestly. I think we, we have people who, um, have been more apt to just give money to our uh, fundraising, which yes, it's great, but we're people of action, you know, see right here, where is it? There it is, people of action, not people of just donating money. And so when we do these volunteer projects or we have events that we need volunteers for, we see a decrease in our membership uh, who actually are at the events attending uh, and volunteering. One of the biggest things I see is the loss of the fun banter that you have at meetings. Um, 
for me personally, when I got into rotary, that was one of my major up points of my week was knowing I was going to be able to laugh for an hour because I was hanging out with people that uh, enjoyed life and had a lot of fun. We're not seeing that as much anymore because we just don't have the attendees. Um, and then going back to the fines and log banks, you know, obviously you can get a lot of that. I know um, the Paris club has a, I, I think it's called happy bucks or something like that. Um, so you miss out on a lot of that too. Um, but then the biggest one to me is point F here. Once you start doing hybrid, it's hard to stop it. I think most of us uh, can agree that we enjoy being in person. Um, unfortunately, that, that's really hard to do uh, right now. And so we have members, I think out of all the members we have that are on Zoom, maybe one really needs to be on Zoom. The rest used to attend in person and they might leave at 740, 745 to go to their job, but they were there for the meeting. They were there to engage themselves and we can get all the announcements out and talk about, you know, our goals and upcoming events and such. Um, so when we look at how our setup is, here's the close up view. So what we do is we don't have a projector like what Jim's club is. We have a television that TV is a little bigger than what it looks. It's about a 46 inch TV. Um, and the YMCA was gracious enough to put it up for us. Uh, so we have that there and it shows all of our members um, as well as the speaker at times. Um, and been, as you can see here, we have the tripod that we put a phone on and that is the camera angle for the speaker. So that's how we do it. Uh, if you look at, um, can you see that larger picture there with, with Step speaking? I don't know if you can see that. Uh, yes. Yes. You can. Okay, good. Okay, good. So this is the you know pullback view. So you can see how we set it up. We just have something in the very middle um, where the tripod's at with the phone. Um, and we try and social distance as much as possible. But you know, like I said, I tell our group, you're grown adults. You should be able to figure this out. Uh, how to separate each other. And I believe everyone in this room, uh, the majority that you see here have their shots. Um, and so they all still feel comfortable being around each other and closer than what they should be proximity. Um, I will tell you this, if you have a room that you're not sure about the connection, uh, this particular room at the YMCA has its own Wi-Fi, we still have connectivity problems. Um, and I think that just happens regardless. I mean, you've got you know, stone walls around us uh, and one little window. So you don't have much of a connection um, there that works very well. So sometimes we get uh, a low connectivity and it doesn't seem to work well. Our This uh, this meeting in particular lost uh, connection, I think three times. So people had to reboot and get back into the meeting. So I would say that's the major con um, with doing a meeting like this. Um, but overall, at the very beginning, it was nice because I think it was fresh. You know, sometimes you, you get into the same routine every week and it can get a little boring. Um, we don't do like what the Muhammad Clubs does. We don't uh, bring it on site. If we're going to do an on site, it's just in person. Um, like we'll do tours of different places in town. And we've only done one or two of those since uh, COVID. But overall, uh, you know, the attendance just unfortunately has not been what we expected it to be. Uh, and hopefully it'll grow once we get more in person. All right. Let me just, um, I'm going to do just a really quick summary because I want to make sure that all of you who have questions uh, can do that. And that's actually more important. So let me just, in Champagne Rotary, we just missed really one week um, it, it, during the shutdown. There was one week and then I put it up on Zoom. And we've actually had a thing where we've had more uh, people attending than when we had just in person because people could just log in. So the, the one thing about this going all virtual, that wasn't that hard uh, in person, hybrids harder, you know, and the hardest thing about that is to keep the people who are online to make them feel like they are fully participating in the meeting. So we have actually, I, I put a camera up. So when people are walking in the room, the, the folks virtually can see who's coming in the room. So they feel like they were looking at that same kind of thing. We, we put a camera on the, the room 
as well as another camera on the speaker. So we have two things going at once. Um, so that the, if you just look at like my thing, you'd actually see the room, just like you were scanning the room. And on Mar Marlis, the president, that camera is focused on the president and the speaker. So, um, you know, we really have three people who are focused on that. And in, the, the, in our case, because we have like, we had 25 people at the last meeting and almost 70 virtually. So 25 in person, 70 virtually. And anyone speaking virtually, there are big monitors that you see those people, but also it's coming through the house sound system. So <laughs> actually the people who are virtually are much louder and have a bigger presence than folks in the room trying to ask a question. So, um, I, you know, I really wanna stop there because I want, you know, all of you who, any questions and what are your experiences and struggles? Feel free to share, please. Rick. Uh, this is Rick Wills with Bloomington Normal Daybreak. And, and uh, uh, Doug, we're, we're much like you. We just, uh, I think we missed one meeting uh, when the pandemic started and we went to uh, Zoom right away. Um, we've come back in person. I think we had our third session coming up with. And we frequently ask, ask a member, we're very, very small, but um, we're like this past week, we had a hundred percent attendance by having, having the uh, uh, accommodation here as we go. Awesome. Um, and, and again, as you talk about getting speakers, uh, we were able to uh, get the, the very first uh, rotary exchange student that happened, that took place here in Bloomington. Wow. Get him, who uh, is a retired physician in Japan, and he joined us and talked about uh, his experiences and shared what it meant to him uh, throughout, and it was, it was fantastic to be able to uh, to do that. Uh, we had one of our members who joined us from the middle of a lake in Wisconsin on vacation. Uh, actually, <laughs> I, I spent... I assume it was I a waterproof six, microphone? <laughs> No, thank goodness he was in a boat. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm just, just wondering. <laughs> and uh, very frankly, I teach at ISU, um, and uh, with everything being virtual, I spent most of uh, last semester um, in Colorado. And it doesn't matter where in the world you are, yeah. as long as you have access to the Internet, I get up at 4.30 every morning well, for meetings, to be ready to uh, to participate. So it, I, I don't see us ever moving away from it. And when we uh, when, when I take over in June, our board meetings are going to continue to be Zoom, uh, just strictly Zoom. Sure. Because we start those at 6.30 in the morning. And uh, yeah. you know, if I still got my pajama bottoms on, it's not a problem. Margie, Van, Mary, any, any comments, questions? Um, this is Margie Sammons. I, that's the reason I kind of jumped on today. Heather and I are uh, classmates for district governor-elect positions, so I thought I would just listen in and gain some knowledge. So it's been extremely valuable this morning. I certainly appreciate all the information. You bet. Mary, any? Um, uh, the reason I joined is because actually we're going to go back. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm with um, CU Sunrise Rotary in Champaign, and uh, we're going to go back in person on, Janu on June 3rd. We, uh, we, we did an excellent, we got up on Zoom within two weeks. Uh, Daryl Holman, who's our incoming president, was our outgoing, it, it has done all of this. He does a super job. We really run a, a really clean um, Zoom thing, but we have not been in person at all. And we've been having really good attendance. We run about 20 or seven or 28 people, about 20 are coming on Zoom. But there's that handful that really don't like Zoom. And sure. so we're really hoping to have them when we come back in virtual. But I have been, obviously, I have been kind of fighting the Zoom thing because of, of keeping the hybrid going. Uh, honestly, because I just heard about some of the, 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 the complaints about it. Um, so um, anyway, so it sounds like we're gonna be going back soon. But anyway, uh, that's why I wanted to hear it. So I'm glad I, I heard these comments about it. I was gonna keep Facebook going, but not do Zoom. But I don't know, maybe, maybe based on your input, maybe I will uh, promote keeping that Zoom going. And Mary, reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, we all have like documents that we can show, like Champion Rotary as a whole sheet of here's what you do and uh, just just follow the plan. So I know we're getting yeah. thrown Darryl's out of here. Daryl's great. He can do it all and there's no problem. Yeah. 
Yeah, Van, anything? Um, yeah, I'm incoming president with uh, Rotary Club of Bloomington. Um, we are moving, we've started in person again and keep trying to keep hybrid, but it's not, it's not that fluid right now. So we're looking to see what investments we would need to make. I'm really intrigued by the idea of bringing in speakers from external and yeah. trying to use it for that purpose. If that's Van, you may want to look at a room speaker as well. Our problem. Morning, Doug. All uh, oh. right, there you are. How you doing, Doug? Doug, Doug. Great, Joe. Double Dougs. <laughs> I know. Maple Doug and Champagne Doug. Jim, Connie, everybody. Good morning. Morning, everybody. Hi, Rita. Hey, right. Doug, maybe uh, me, you, and Jim should put our uh, contact info in the chat um, just in Doug. case anyone has any. Good idea. Questions. Let's do that now. Okay. Uh, you know, it's just going to go to everybody, I think, which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's great. Jim, you want to um, record this session? I'd be happy to. Yeah, uh, you know, and then what I would suggest too is um, if you get a chance, when when we see that breakout room is closing, go ahead and stop the recording. It made me a little uneasy the last time that we didn't get to do that, that it just kind of like, okay, did we hit the save button or not? So. Um, so let's let's actually go ahead uh, now because we have 22 minutes. Uh, let me just set up a little bit of a framework. Um, we are very interested uh, not in the model of we have a fabulous answer and we hope it matches your question, but we we want to um, hear from all of you. Like, what are your struggles? What things would you like to know? Instead of us, you know, just sharing what we think. We need to know what you really want and need to hear as well. So, um, so what we will do is, let me just admit that person, is to um, kind of give you a little bit of an overview, but I want to keep that to really just half the time because I want to make sure that your questions get answered, okay? So um, there are three of us who will be sharing, um, you know, myself, Jim Matthews, and Doug Ireland. Um, so uh, Jim, we'll start with you. And if you want to introduce yourself and just a little bit of a background about uh, what you guys have been doing in Muhammad. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Jim Matthews. I'm a past president of the Muhammad Club and <clears throat> I currently serve as the uh, club secretary and uh, I'm also uh, assistant governor for area two. Uh, <clears throat> Muhammad um, did not respond uh, uh, with, with great uh, speed to the onset of the pandemic. We were actually uh, shut down for two months. <clears throat> when it started, we didn't meet. And uh, we, we, so we got into Zoom uh, <clears throat> in the late spring, early summer, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, <clears throat> we were exclusively a, a Zoom uh, uh, meeting club for a oh, uh, month and a half, two months. And then uh, I bought a site license for us for Zoom. And we uh, decided in September, we, we, we wanted to start bringing more people into an in-person environment. So <clears throat> we had a small space uh, and a, a relatively few number of people came in person, but uh, most of the club was able to come uh, via Zoom, so our tenants remained uh, very strong um, <clears throat> through the through the winter break. Um, and then when the vaccination started to roll out, we sort of flipped from from uh, we had uh, three Zoom members for every in person, and that flipped to three person three three people in person to everyone 
uh, via Zoom. Uh, we have two members who <clears throat> work for local nonprofits, have to be at their desk at seven, <clears throat> which is when we, we start our meetings. So we've been able to keep them involved uh, and able to attend our meetings by doing a hybrid uh, format. We have, a, uh, <clears throat> we have a projector and a screen. We have a platform from which to do the projection and uh, we use uh, desktop speakers. Uh, we have not found a need to uh, add uh, external uh, microphone at this point. We continue to use the microphone that's in my laptop because we are uh, small in a, in a fairly, fairly small space. Uh, we have taken this <coughs> set up on the road. Uh, we've taken it to the uh, Parks and Rec Department here in uh, Muhammad in a very big room that was very brightly lit. We were very happy we had invested in a uh, very high quality projector that, that has, uh, shines a very bright light. So even in a well-lit room, everybody was able to see and uh, uh, be seen. Uh, next month, we're taking it to uh, <clears throat> an apart a new apartment complex that's been built here in Muhammad. And uh, we're going to their sort of clubhouse and uh, so it's nice that we can we can uh, take it on the road. Uh, <clears throat> here's what we've we've learned. Um, let's just share this with you. These these are our uh, uh, recommendations that I would make uh, based on uh, our experience. <clears throat> if you're going to use a projector, <clears throat> excuse me, make sure it's a high quality one. The speakers are crucial. Uh, uh, the sound system is very, very important uh, so that people can be heard clearly. Uh, Whoever is hosting, uh, uh, sort of working the technology needs to be comfortable with it. Uh, keep things simple, uh, as simple as possible. Uh, you don't need to invest in lots of fancy bells and whistles. Uh, the main thing is to be able to get people into your meeting and uh, have them participate. Uh, you can assume something will go wrong, uh, and that's why the Zoom host needs to be comfortable <laughs> and clear-headed because something will go wrong, and uh, uh, you want to be able to fix it quickly. Um, uh, I learned uh, this just this past week to make sure my laptop battery, uh, which is what we run the meeting off of, is charged. Uh, I had failed to do that. We got through our meeting fine, but our, in the middle of our board meeting, my battery quit, and then immediately cut out everybody who was attending by Zoom. So that was uh, uh, rude on my part. Um, you, you have to store this equipment and you have to be able to, you, you need to know who's going to have access to it and who is responsible for setting it up and tearing it down. Um, <clears throat> we talked about if you take it on the road, uh, you need to be able to get the, the Wi-Fi password of your new site. Um, one thing what I found, which is it seems very mundane, but uh, <clears throat> be careful of extension cords. If you're if you like we are setting up this equipment, uh, I found that it, it we really have to tape them down. Uh, if you have an extension cord uh, that's not covered, somebody's going to trip over it. Uh, and um, finally, um, when people are speaking in a virtual setup. Uh, we have to remind them not to speak. If they're in person, we have to remind them not to speak to the screen, but to speak to the device that's uh, doing the broadcast. So speak to the laptop or speak to the camera. Um, and that is my part. Thanks, Jim. You know, so that's actually just starting that framework. Before Doug and I actually share a little bit about our club's experience, I just want to make sure before we do that, um, for Julie, for Joe, um, for Mary, tell me what your, if, if you walked out of this session and got, gosh, that's the question I really want uh, answered. What is that question? What are your struggles? So we make sure that gets addressed. No pressure, but Julie, we'll start with you. And let's talk about the mute button first. I've tried to be the one to send out the, the stuff and I've been, a, I've only gotten 
do, but I need to sit next to someone and do. Running the meeting is not a problem, but um, we normally have our in-club meetings at a place that has a lot of technology. I don't know how to run any of it, but um, but we've only been meeting in uh, on Zoom the whole time because we have older club members and I've tried to do a hybrid. I've gone to a local restaurant and been in the back room and no one's gotten, well, they've gotten on there, but no one else has come to be live with us, which is fine. But um, I just use my iPad and that, that works fine for the meeting. But um, I just, I'm not really good with computers. What I know, I know. And what I don't know, I don't know. So I don't even know what questions to ask. So I just thought I would see what everybody else is doing, you know, and, and then I might have some questions, which Got I can. So fair. right now I don't have any. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And, and I thought, you know, the comment again, that I, I, I think I heard you say that you had older members who liked actually being on Zoom. Did you? Interesting, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that a flip? Mm -hmm. And that certainly Champagne Rotary's experience. We had people who weren't coming because of, you know, you know, many things. Uh, and now that has enabled those members to be fully engaged and participating when before they could not. How's that for a flip? So Joe, what about you? Yeah, we have uh, one member that le lives in California part of the year and in here part of the year. So he can get on, you know, it's no big deal for him to get on on a regular basis. And he's very involved with the club. And when they're here, he's very active, you know, so. Cool. We have sure. time everywhere. So <laughs> kind of balances cool. out, but we have, we're, we're a really small club. So we need all the members on, you know? <laughs> so Joe, uh, what about you? Morning all. Um, we've done Zoom and we've switched to hybrid. We have now done a, a month of hybrid meetings. We did a, a, a hybrid meetings also in the fall. We're a small club. We're only 12 members at the moment. Uh, but maintaining a Zoom interface capability is huge. And I'd encourage all of you to at least continue thinking about doing so. Uh, we have a member or two that may simply be traveling, working abroad, uh, working elsewhere. And uh, uh, we're a little family. I like to think of Rotary as a family and just being able to uh, not have the pressure of either going to a site or not having to get dressed, whatever the case is, just having that opportunity. I think, uh, and that's working so well, we literally had 100% attendance at Thursday's meeting, and uh, which I think is phenomenal. Uh, I've heard a lot of clubs say, hey, our attendance has been great with Zoom. And now that people are more and more folks are getting vaccinated, uh, the ability to meet in person's there, but uh, we're going to continue that Zoom offering um, for, I'm thinking quite a while. I hear some clubs may be shutting it down or maybe limiting how, um, uh, what do you call it, communicative it may be, uh, maybe just have a set camera uh, to where they can participate remotely, but there's still some benefit in, say, moving the camera around and highlighting uh, say happy dollars or announcements anyway, but it's going to be up to each club as to how they do that. But, uh, we've had pretty good luck and, um, uh, and making things work, but we, we tend to shift room to room. Uh, and we do run into some differing technology, like a, a monitor that I had one heck of a time fighting, uh, two weeks ago and, uh, it wouldn't allow, uh, you know, the virtual folks to talk. And I could not figure out the settings <laughs> for life of me. So <laughs> technology can be a struggle, but, uh, have somebody tech friendly, if at all possible, help out with that. So that's my two cents worth. Nothing really, just to okay. help out with others. Anybody, uh, Mary, Rita, Phil, any questions? About the only thing, uh, we are all Zoom. We missed one meeting week with the shutdown. We are lucky enough to have most, many, if not most of our um, folks, uh, working for or retired from the University of Illinois, which had a site license for Zoom. We can't share that publicly on our Facebook page because it is the university. So um, eventually we, I think we're gonna keep a Zoom presence because a, a number of folks who are, uh, we have a member who is in Champaign uh, sometimes and in Arizona other times, she's able to Zoom in when um, she's available out in Arizona. Uh, and that's great because we get to make sure we see her. Um, others, I, I don't find it odd that the age group flipped because some of our working members 
are on Zoom all day long and they hate it. Yeah. So by the time, you know, we're just going to have to find another place because we're not going to be able to meet on campus, which is where we were. So making sure that our technology is compatible with whatever we find, wherever we land, I think that's going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, questions from anyone? Struggles? Mary, you want to unmute? Um, well, first, I, I would uh, back up what Rita said, because that's what I've observed with CU Sunrise. We've been meeting by Zoom only. And, but there are some people who absolutely refuse to come now who used to come. And I've observed that they are people who are working. And so I, I have the same impression that they're in so many Zoom meetings already. For those of us who are retired, you know, maybe that doesn't bother us as much. But I'm AG for um, area 10, and that includes Arthur and Arcola. And they're both having hybrid meetings. And I'm thinking that it might be good for your committee to offer technical assistance to clubs if they're interested, to actually visit their clubs and help them with their technical assistance because Arcola does a pretty good job, I think, on their hybrid meetings. But Arthur, I tried to attend some hybrid meetings with them and I couldn't even hear the speaker. You know, they had the camera in the back of the room and uh, you just saw, you know, this little head and I couldn't even hear what the speaker was saying. So I think it, it's hit and miss with the hybrid meetings, it, depending on the technical skills of the people in the club. And I really think it'd be good if there was a district committee that was willing to help clubs actually visit the clubs and help them with that. That's a great comment. So to that end, um, let me just share a couple of things from Champaign Rotary's perspective. And again, for for Phil um, and Connie, I'm just, you know, I know that it's our club, so anything you want to share. And then, so Doug and I will just kind of add into the discussion here. For, from my perspective, all virtual, all in-person, those are straight ahead. The hybrid is harder. It just is. And, and one of the biggest struggles is to make the people who are on the virtual side feel like they are active and full, fully participating in the process. Um, so one of the things at Champaign Rotor, we have two cameras up, one is on the speaker, and I have another camera that is set just to view the room, even uh, set at the entrance of the room. So if you're on virtual, you can actually see people like, oh, so-and-so just showed up, that kind of thing. We also have a greeter who was online just doing this kind of thing, talking to all the online people. Um, just making them feel welcome. And I think that's really, really important. Otherwise they feel like they're watching everybody else have a conversation. You need to have somebody who's just having a conversation with only the hybrid people, if that's possible. Um, so we actually have a house microphone because the club is large enough to do that. So we have double microphones, a house mic and a mic that goes to the, to the Zoom account. Um, having a really good camera and a really good mic uh, are very helpful for people. Our speakers actually come through the house sound system. So as Connie will tell you, the people who are virtual, when they make a comment, they are way louder than anybody in the room. Uh, and, and again, that, that's a good thing because they feel part of the process. Um, so we have somebody who's just, the speaker is, uh, you know, on, like Marlis, the president is, running the presentation in her laptop, but we have somebody else in the laptop in the back who's actually doing um, everything else that's in the background and admitting people, doing all that stuff, running the board. There's actually really three of us who are doing that at any one time. So um, Doug, uh, comments from your end in, in, in Danville? Uh, yeah, for Danville Sunrise, we, um... We took four weeks off back in March of 2020 and then got back in with just Zoom and we've kind of flipped flop back and forth, Zoom, hybrid, Zoom, hybrid. And we're currently in the hybrid stage. And uh, I think what I have found is that no one wants to be in charge of it. That's been our big issue. Uh, I was in charge of it until finally I looked at the board and said, if we, if I do another one of these, we're canceling Zoom. And I finally got one other person to step up and no one else will. And I think that has been my biggest issue uh, with the club is that no one is stepping up to help. They all want to do it whichever way, you know, it's more comfortable to them. 
but that's the biggest issue there. Um, but I do have some pros and cons here of, of this, and I'll just brief through these just for time's sake. But, you know, one of the things that I learned off of uh, the hybrid meetings and Zoom is that you can attract speakers from outside of your community since we normally do just in person. Um, before we did in person. So uh, one of the examples I gave in the last uh, last breakout was uh, I have a, a friend here uh, from Danville that moved uh, to Virginia. And it, I think he was around five, six years old as a child. He um, contracted polio and he's nearing 70 now and is uh, he still struggles with it and has having some actual current struggles because of it. And um, he was able to talk about his struggles with polio. This was right before polio month came about because I was trying to really ramp up the uh, contributions, uh, donations to it. And uh, so we were able to get him. Uh, Bill Tobin is another guy from Shelterbox, if you guys know that name, who's always willing to talk to any group. Um, and Zoom has been great for that capability. <clears throat> um, just kind of copy what uh, has been said before. We have a member that goes to Florida. He's not in California, Arizona, but he's in Florida six months out of the year. So he's able to still join us as well. One of the biggest things that I've seen from us is uh, with the addition of PayPal, uh, we did Zoom and we did PayPal at the same time. We've actually seen more donations from our log banks. That way um, we've had some of our uh, events that we have coming up where sponsors, uh, we get sponsors for these events and they pay through PayPal as well. Uh, it's been a, a huge uh, thing for us to try and uh, bring in money so that we don't always have to go uh, get that money or have it mailed to us and worry about the mail system. It's just instantaneous. Um, one of the cons we've seen is the de decreased engagement. Uh, so we've actually seen uh, where people might enjoy Zoom but they don't attend any of these in-person volunteer things uh, that we do in the community or uh, events that we have. Um, so that's, that's kind of been our struggle. Um, one of the things I miss is the fun banter that we have at the meetings. Um, you know, when I first started, I loved Thursday mornings. I mean, you know, 10 years ago when I started, I thought, man, Thursday mornings are great. It's really ramping up my weekend. I can laugh for an hour. Well, now, when you have a decreased attendance um, in person, it kind of loses that fun banter that you always had. Uh, and then I think the biggest thing for me is once you start, it's hard to stop Zoom. Um, so you do have those working people. Uh, I think the working people that we have on Zoom aren't on Zoom all week or all day. Uh, I just think that they've gotten to the point where they're like, I can just sit at home and get ready with my camera off and listen to the meeting. So once again, are how engaged are they really? with the speakers that we have. And that's, uh, that's kind of been the struggle that I've seen uh, with our club. And I'll show you the um, view of our room. This is at the YMCA where we meet. And um, you can see people are closer than they should be. I have not put those chairs there. They have created that I, themselves. They've put those chairs closer than they should. And I have told everyone, you're grown adults, do what you want, um, but you should know, you know what you're doing. And you can see uh, most of the people here have their vaccinations already and they feel comfortable in this setting. Um, you can see there's not a lot of people. We've had decreased attendance, even with the hybrid. Um, we used to have about 20 to 22, where now we have about 13 to 17. Um, and I think that's all a, a big part of that was the engagement that we see. We just don't have it. Uh, but you can see our setup here is uh, pretty simple. Uh, if you go closer here, you see we have a tripod with one of our phones on there, and then we have a television that shows everything else. So we go back and forth with showing the speaker on there and showing all of our attendees. Uh, but it's a very simple setup that we have. Our biggest issue is connectivity. Sometimes we have low connectivity. Um, so you just need to find a, an, you know, a space that is able to do that for you where you can have that. And uh, Julie, I know I'll be your AG in July, so I can always reach out uh, to you and help you with anything if you need. So Bill, um, any questions, any uh, struggles on your end? Uh, Phil Kep? Go on, I'm mute. Um, well, I'm, oh, wait a minute. You're good. Now, okay, now I'm all right. Um, well, I'm one of those people that uh, um, 
are out in, uh, I'm in California right now. Uh, we came chasing grandchildren out here and uh, I've been able to stay uh, active uh, in, the, in the Matt Toon Club by, uh, by Zoom. Good. And I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. We had, and before COVID hit, I was just screaming to, to be able to attend. And anyway, the, and let's see, we're going to be closing here in 53 seconds. Uh, the, the one thing uh, that I would like to, to see our club do is actually have an organization, like say, have a, a committee so that we can um, have a person, like say, have a camera on, actually have cameras, not a, a um, cell phone, have cameras on the speaker, and then have somebody actually running a camera in the, in the back of the room so that if somebody has a question, uh, a comment, or whatever, you can zoom in on that. And instead of trying to say, what did he say? And um, it, but that thing takes more organization. And the, the idea of having uh, the, the committee coming out and working with our